Welcome to The Bo Show, the home of faith, family, and freedom. A big thank you to our subscribers on Epoch TV, as well as those watching on NTD's television platform. We always aim to inform and inspire. Unprecedented, that is the theme of today's show, because never before has a former president been indicted. This is a first. You may recall that former President Donald Trump issued a statement that he anticipated being indicted by the Manhattan District Attorney, Alvin Bragg, over alleged hush money he paid during the 2016 election cycle via his then attorney, Michael Cohen. This became news because leaks were coming out of the Manhattan District Attorney's office that signaled to Trump that this was on the horizon. So Trump got ahead of the story by publicly telling everyone this was coming. However, the indictment and potential arrest or turning himself in did not happen the day or week he thought it would. It seemed that maybe Trump was just calling Bragg's bluff, knowing that he could spin this back on them and make them look bad. But last Thursday, it actually happened. A New York grand jury was presented with evidence by Bragg and decided in favor of the indictment. Now, no one knows what the 34 charges are, and we won't until Tuesday, when Trump will appear. We don't know if we will see a mugshot or any theatrics played out, but we know that all eyes will be on that courtroom. Here's what we can expect to be in the charges, though. This centers around $130,000 paid to adult film actress Stormy Daniels, who claims she had an affair with Donald Trump as a private citizen, not as president. This was paid by Trump's former attorney, Michael Cohen, who took out loan money to pay her. Trump then paid Cohen at a later date in that amount, which he marked as legal fees. This money allegedly would keep Daniels quiet during his run for president, with the assumption that news of an affair would hurt his presidential chances, even though Donald Trump was widely known for his cad-like qualities. Since that time, Daniels has reversed course and said she did not have an affair with Trump. And headlines around her were really focused on her former lawyer, Democrat Michael Avenatti, who swindled her out of tons of money and in an Icarus-like way just flew too close to the sun and quickly fell from grace, but was once even floated as a Democrat presidential contender. It was clear that Avenatti was biased and had a personal vendetta against Trump. Similarly, Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg is also a Democrat. And while federal charges were abandoned over this same issue, Manhattan has been the sort of Custer's last stand of hope for Dems to nail Trump in the legal system. That also makes this unprecedented. If the feds couldn't get him on this charge, what makes Manhattan think that they can do it? 34 charges sounds like throwing a plate of spaghetti against the wall and hoping something sticks. But here's the rub. This is usually a misdemeanor charge, not a felony. What Bragg has had to do is elevate this minor alleged crime to a felony level. It relies on a novel legal theory that has never been tested in court. And prosecutors must prove that he falsified business records to cover up or commit a separate crime. This is why it is on such shaky ground and looks highly partisan. After all, Alvin Bragg got to be where he is today because of the money of George Soros, who is now totally engaged in the business of electing liberal DAs across the country who are soft on crime and reducing charges, which inevitably makes our cities more dangerous. When you think back about the crime and lack of safety in New York City, it amazes me that this is where Bragg is focusing his attention, on hush money, while people are dying in the streets of New York. Every city where Soros has successfully placed a DA is hurting in terms of crime. Now, Democrats are saying that this is what the justice system is supposed to do. Hold powerful people accountable, even former presidents. Republicans see this the way Trump does, as a political witch hunt, which amounts to election interference, a hit job intended to wound Trump's chances of ever becoming president again when they see Biden's numbers underwater and him getting more feeble and frail by the day. Even Joe Biden won't chime in on this. Trump will have his arraignment on Tuesday and will have to be fingerprinted and a mugshot taken, which if released 
may prove to be one of the most iconic photos of our time. Alan Dershowitz, a Democrat, has written extensively about the legal case to entangle Trump in his book, Get Trump, the threat to civil liberties, due process, and our constitutional rule of law. Dershowitz has pointed out the fact that there is a crime that has come just from the leak itself, from the grand jury, which would have to be someone in Bragg's office or someone connected to the grand jury. This is a class E felony in New York, but Bragg isn't interested in this and apparently is not even investigating it. So let's just state this at the outset. He is bringing charges against Trump, but before he can even get the indictment, News of it is being leaked from within, which isn't just maybe a crime, it is a crime. So the first crime has already happened and it came from within Bragg's handling of what he's trying to do. This is how Dershowitz framed it. Instead, he targeted Trump, campaigned against him as a Democrat, promised he would get him, spent years searching through the statute books, couldn't find anything, but was determined to indict the man who was running against the head of the Democratic Party, Joe Biden, man, I voted for him, hope to vote for again. Politics has nothing to do with this, but what is he doing? Uh, searching for crimes, finding nothing, inventing or creating a crime, instead of searching for crimes that are occurring right under his nose, perhaps by people in his own staff. This is a double standard. This is targeting and weaponizing. It's not the American way of justice. A very sad day for justice. Look, we haven't seen the indictment. We can't be sure. Maybe they have a videotape of him shooting somebody on Fifth Avenue. But based on what we know about this case, it may be one of the weakest cases in my 60 years of experience. So there you have it. Dershowitz, a bona fide Democrat who voted for Biden and will do so again, is telling us that this case has no merit and is all made up. Dershowitz also points out why Manhattan was chosen. It is totally politically biased and compromised. A Republican could never get a fair trial there, much less the most prominent Republican in the world, Donald Trump. Dershowitz described how he and his wife lost friends when he represented the Trump defense in his Senate impeachment trial. While Dershowitz does not agree with Trump politically, he made the case that the impeachment had no merit from a legal perspective. If a person can see beyond his or her own political preferences and just see the law, this case falls apart. But Dershowitz makes this point because these judges and these jurors have to go home and face their family, their friends, and their peers, which they may lose if they let Trump walk. It wasn't hard for Bragg to get this indictment. You can indict a ham sandwich in New York. But if that ham is Donald Trump, forget about it. That's one tasty piece of pork that they want to sink their teeth into. Dershowitz further explains what the DA is going to have to prove and how weak this legally would be. If this were somebody named John Smith and it were in Chicago, um, there'd be zero chance any first year law student would win the case. Bragg has to prove that what Trump should have done after paying hush money, he should have made a public statement on his corporate record saying the reason I paid the $130,000 was to keep a former porn star quiet about an adulterous affair I had, which I'm trying to keep from my wife. Nobody in history has ever, ever made that kind of disclosure. And nobody in history has ever been indicted for not making that disclosure. He listed it as a legal expense. It was part of resolution of a lawsuit. It's a made up charge. Nobody would ever dream of bringing that charge against the thousands of people who sign non-disclosure agreements and pay hush money and don't properly list exactly what the hush money was paid for. Then on top of that, you have to piggyback that misdemeanor with a federal felony that the federal government didn't prosecute or a state felony that the state didn't prosecute. And so you have an act of incredible stretching of the law uh, and that's not the way the law is supposed to operate. What happened here is first they decided who they were going to go after. Get Trump. Name of my book. Get Trump. The title is not original with me. I got it from the district attorney and the, pro and the attorney general who campaigned on the promise of getting Trump. So they decide to get Trump. They win election. They rummage through the statute books. They find nothing. 
And so they create a crime by adding one plus one equals 11. But the end result is zero plus zero equals zero. There's no crime here. It is key to all of this that Trump is running for re-election in 2024. That's what makes this significant because this would amount effectively to election interference. The intent to harm a candidate from winning because even if convicted, it will not prevent Trump from running or even winning the presidential election. This case has so many different levels because you can't look at it the way that Bragg wants you to look at it, which is Trump paid off a porn star. He didn't earmark it properly. So it's a campaign finance crime. Keep watching at EpochTV.com forward slash The Bow Show.